Okay. Now I go live. I will not. Awesome. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you. Warm greetings from IAU, from Georgia, from my show. I am Inga Hachilava, IAU Europe Head, Country Director, IAU Georgia, IAU Board Member. I hope you are all well and will stay with us. We hear some amazing and inspiring answers from our great, talented, and inspiring guests today from Canada. Before we start the show, let's get to know IAU and our founder. International Internship University, IAU, is a leading virtual education system and global brand confederation, which is the most valuable and truth world and well reputed in developing innovative programs. Globally, it is a truth name for quality training programs and is committed to providing better and virtual education to all the young learners of the globe. IAU is metamorphosing the conventional education system by carrying down the additional cost and providing access to more than 1,000 class courses and internships to their learners across the globe with the help of its 1,000 class global educators. IAU has formed its four councils, namely Women Entrepreneurs Councils, International Students Development Council, International Youth Development Council, International Council of Educators. The main objective behind the councils is to provide support in every respect to the students, youth, women, entrepreneurs, and educators. In a short span of time, IIU has spread its wings in 195 countries and six continents under the strong leadership of its visionary founder, Mr. Peur Fanditsar, a committed and inspiring social activist. FSUNATE education is from the last two decades, providing education to students from various social and cultural backgrounds. He has publicize the world education policy. One education, one foundation, one world. The visionary Piyush Pandit had just one dream. No child should be deprived of education. He is working towards it day and night. He is self-guarding and promoting education and well-being of learners at all time of life in Skominebu, the sky is limited for your dedication and hard work. Thank you very much, sir, for everything. Okay, it is really very important for society and for us. God bless you. Keep up a very important job. Oh, so now it is time to introduce you to our guest who is ready to answer my questions. I'm sure we have a useful and very interesting show ahead. A professional, inspirational speaker, educator, facilitator, and amazing best songs author. Von Eric is a positive influencer, mentor, and coach of public speaking, clarity and confidence booming. Wow, his work is absolutely about the importance of communication, 
learn the art of public speaking and confidence in presentation. Von Eric Tandok is a licensed teacher and had a background in customer server and marketing in the Philippines before moving to Canada in 2008. He now speaking globally in different platforms, organizations, and schools to share his mission and vision. Yes, I'm actually excited. My respect to you. We are really proud of you. I'm very honored that you are on my show today and answer my questions. Thank you for much for your time. Thank you. Okay, and now my show, Court Hour with Inga, is open. Hello. Okay. Beautiful. Okay. <laughs> and now I'm going to ask you the first question. You are ready? Yes, I am ready. And I'm actually watching you live in my cell phone. So <laughs> this is exciting. <laughs> right, right. Good luck. Okay. Briefly, let us about yourself, my dear. Well, uh, one of the most uh, difficult question actually when they ask you, tell me about yourself. Actually, well, when they ask you, tell you about yourself, of course, we don't want to tell about ourselves. We just want other people to say something about us, but with due respect to your question, uh, you already mentioned my name. My name is Bonary Kandok. I, I live in Alberta, Canada. I came here 2008, so this will be my, I'm almost 15 years here in Canada. And you mentioned I came from the Philippines, so I'm a teacher and a Customer service specialist in marketing with, uh, experience. Right now, right now, what I do is I'm into safety as my main job in daytime job. And at the same time, I'm also involved in many organizations. Typically, I really wanted to be with people to learn, to inspire to connect as I'm doing inspirational speaking and I also uh, writing my next book. Typically, that is me. Very simple young man, uh, just trying to learn, connect, and speak with different organizations. Wow. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I have next question for you. Uh, you know, we are very interested. What projects are you working on now? Yeah, thank you for asking that. Actually, my next project is I'm trying to write my next book. Mm -hmm. so my first, my 
first book is act actually about communication presentation in public speaking. Right now, I'm trying to conceive a book about more on inspiration. And then the other one is more on about giving and receiving feedback. Because I learned that to be able to learn more, develop more, uh, we need to accept feedback. We need to accept opinion. We need to accept evaluation. And we need to accept criticism without being hurt. So that is what I'm writing right now. So yeah, that's my next project. Actually, two books. Wow, we're really proud of you. Keep up the amazing job. Congratulations and best wishes. Okay, very interesting, really. What does uh, success mean to you? Who has contributed the most to your success? Well, we all have a different definition of success. Mm -hmm. Every people is unique. So one person may define success for him having lots of money in the bank. <clears throat> uh, other people might say success is having lots of cars, big houses. Other may say success for him or her is uh, successful business. So what my point here is most of us or every one of us maybe define success as into wealth. Now for me, if I'm going to define success, success is one thing that you achieve, you are happy with it, happy. Let's say I want to inspire people and I was able to do that goal, then that is success for me. Success is something that you ate, you are able for something, you achieve it, and you're happy with it. For me, I equate success with happiness. You may be successful, but if you're not happy, then that's not 100% success. Success is something that you are happy, contented, grateful, thankful. Even if you have a million dollars, if you're not happy, then I don't think that's success. So always, success may not be a bigger thing. It can be a small thing. As long as you're happy and grateful to it, then you're already successful. Wow, oh, very inspiring answer. Thank you so much for the sharing. Wow, great, great. Thank you very much. I wish you very many, many for success in your life. Okay, <clears throat> next question. What is your home country? What did you do in your country before coming to Canada? What is uh, difficult to stay in uh, Canada? This is a very interesting question, I think. Yes, uh, that's an interesting question. So my home country is Philippines. Philippines is located in Asia. I was... I was born and raised there. Then in 2008, I moved to Canada for a better opportunity. At first, I only want to try. I just want to get experience. I just want to try living and working abroad. But later on, I like it here. <clears throat> I like it here. Like I like people. Uh, they're friendly. And I came to like the... The country itself, it's it's good. So we decided to stay here and became permanent resident. And then eventually we became uh, citizens of Canada. Mm -hmm. Is it difficult to settle in Canada? Uh, well, always. Even if you go to another country, it's always difficult to settle in another country. Even let's say I decided to go to Georgia today and start living there. It's difficult. It's because you need to adjust, right? And you don't know the people. You don't know the culture. Much worse, the language, right? Let's say in Georgia, if I'm going to go to Georgia today, I don't know the language. So it's difficult. So same thing in Canada. 
every time that you settle in one country, it's always difficult, particularly if you're just by yourself and you don't have your family. What I do in, in the Philippines before moving to Canada, I'm a registered teacher. So I am a licensed teacher there. But my background, my work experience is on mar about marketing and customer service. So I have like more than a decade of experience in customer service and marketing before I moved to Canada. Wow. Over to you. <laughs> Great. God bless you. Thank you so much. Great answer. Very interesting also. Thank you. Okay, my dear friend, how important do you think time management is in the 21st century? If you have any feedback, please share it with us because we, we can learn from you. Well, thanks for asking that about time management, actually. Time management is Management is very important for each and everyone, not only for ourselves, but also for other people. Right? We need to manage time. But I love to tell this to everyone because I have this topic that I presented in one organization. So I did a 40 minutes presentation last November, and the topic is about effective time management in communication and presentation. And in that presentation, I mentioned we can manage time. We can only manage ourselves. Okay? So you need to manage yourself first before you will manage time. Time is always there. Time is moving. Time is ticking. But you, you control yourself. So if you manage yourself, then you can manage time. Now, what's the importance of time management? Of course, you're always on time. You're not always on panic. You're relaxed. And you're well prepared and planned. You plan everything. That's how important time management is in today's uh, world. In business, family, school, personal. Time management is such a uh, overrated thing that we don't consider it. I remember in some part of countries like Philippines, they call it Filipino time. Why? Filipino time is always late. Same with true when I went to Mexico four years ago and then the cab driver said, did you hear about Mexican time? So you see, what does it mean by Mexican time, Filipino time? They're always late. Mm -hmm. because they don't manage their time. So it's the importance of manage, uh, time management is actually discipline, commitment. Wow. Over to you. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, now for Fung, please recall a funny story that happened to you. Oh, yes. there's a lot. Okay. Share this one. Uh, uh, so, hmm. Okay, there's one in Singapore when we visited Singapore seven or eight years ago. So I don't know in Georgia, how do you have your vehicle uh, like the driving? The wheel is on the left or is in the right? Because in Singapore, it's mm -hmm. the opposite. Singapore is the same as in United Kingdom. Mm. So it's a right-hand drive. Okay. So when we're about to go to some place in Singapore and we are, we're going to ride the cab, then the cab stops. When I open it, it's the driver. Okay, I don't realize. And to be honest, I don't know that Singapore is using a right-hand drive vehicle. So when I open it, it's the driver. So he was laughing. Other side. He said, this is not Philippines. This is not United States. So, but he's laughing. He's joking. So mm. there are only a few countries in the world that use the right-hand drive. And 
to be honest, I don't know that. It's kind of funny. We're laughing. But the moral of this story here is when you go and visit different countries, you will learn. You will mm. learn. You will learn experience. So traveling is really good for our development, right? You need to learn. Sometimes reading books is not enough. Sometimes it's better to travel because you get to know different culture, different, uh, call this one, anything that it's not happening in your own country. So that's a funny story. When I opened it, the driver, I was surprised. And I don't know that Singapore is like that. That is funny because every one of us is laughing. The driver is laughing. Okay. Over to you. <laughs> Wow, <laughs> you are so amazing. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. Okay, <clears throat> I have uh, one question for you. Very interesting also, I think. If you we are given free choices in life, what would you do? Only three choices. If I've given a three choices in life, what yes, should I do? Three choices. Only three, right? Mm -hmm. Only three. Uh, okay. That means that will be my top three, probably. Top three. Okay. One is I want to travel and speak to different parts of the world, number one. In person, not, not like this. Second one, probably uh, I want to be healthy, healthier and live longer so that I can do what I want to do. I can do the number one, right? You can't do the number one if you will not live longer and you're not healthy, right? So, so. And number three choice is probably, oh, this is a tough one. Yeah, very tough, very difficult. I continue to speak, uh, mm -hmm. write books. I continue to coach and mentor people who will approach me. That's my three. It's, this is difficult. This is difficult. But I like the number two. Live longer and be healthy. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Excellent. Excellent answer. I'm really proud of you. Okay. Yeah, next question. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. okay. Let's start. And next question. Dear, what do you want to do before you die? There you go. Okay. So we have the three choices. Now, what would I like to do before I die? Uh, I'm dreaming of having my own scholarship. I want to establish, I want to start scholarship foundation. So that is one thing I want to do before I die because I always believe on education. We are teachers, right? You are educator. I am an educator. Although I'm doing coaching and mentor, but yes. I want to have an educational foundation that will help poor but deserving students to continue on their education. So that is one thing I want to do before I die. And I haven't started it yet. I don't know how to start it, but I'm hoping and wishing and praying that hopefully before I die, I have an educational foundation in my name to help people. Wow. That's what I want to do. Really so it's kind of scholarship, yeah, scholarship foundation, free, hmm. free tuition fee to college or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> so super. <laughs> okay, thank you. I'm actually excited. Thank you. And next question. Uh, what is uh, freedom for you? And how important is freedom for a person? Your opinion. 
freedom for me is if we will put it into each country that is sovereignty. But for personal aspect, freedom is something that you are free, happy to do what you want to do in this world. There's no restriction. Okay? No one is dictating you that you can't do this. You only can do this. Right? For me, that's freedom. If I want to go and go to school without restriction, then that's freedom. If I can go and choose the job I want, then that's freedom. So no restriction. No one is dictating you. It's not against your will. Right? Mm -hmm. That is freedom. So I am fortunate that I am in Canada because Canada is a diversified country. There's a diversity here. But we have that freedom. We're not that really restricted here. It's an open country. And you can do anything you want. Freedom for me is there's a equality. Mm. And I saw that equality here in, in this country. You can be rich. You're in a middle class. You're not rich. But there's equality. Wow. So that is freedom for me. Very interesting. Oh my God, you, all your answer really very inspiring. Thank you so much. Okay, next question. Uh, what would be a good title for yourself and why? And uh, you know, a very interesting for your autobiography also. Good title, yes. Best title, probably I want simple one. I don't want flowery words. I don't want, for me, because I've been mentoring and coaching communication and public speaking. The main purpose of communication and public speaking is actually to be understood, right? So when you're speaking out there and then you say a lot of flowery words or deep words, but they don't understand it, then there's no point because our main objective when we speak is to be understood, right? So same with true with the title. I just want to be clear, simple words. Probably the title is my life story. Mm -hmm. That's it. My life story. Very simple, but catchy because people will think, what is that story, right? Because when you said the title, probably the successful business story of Inga, then people already know it's about business. So just simple yet catchy words. That is what I want as a title of my biography, my life story. Because each of us has different story. And that story is our own brand. That's your story. And the best person who will tell your story is you yourself. Nobody can tell your own story because everyone of us is unique. So, yes, what is the title? Very simple but catchy. Very, very simple. The life story. There you go. Great, great, great. Thank you. Oh, my God. So wonderful. Wonderful answer. Okay, next question. Oh, what advice would you give uh, to others who are ready to change their lives? Because I think many people think about this. My advice to reach. Well, first is, my advice is really probably if you're re ready to change your life, let's say you want to change a certain aspect of your life. Mm -hmm. right? let's say in my case, one good example is I changed my life because I went to another country. So that's a big change, right? 
So when you change your life, you are actually thinking out of, outside of the box. Right? Thinking outside of the box. When you change your life, you are making not only a small change, but a big change that will impact yourself. So for those who are willing to change their life, of course, my number one advice is just be patient. Change is not overnight. Right? Change can't happen in just like this. There's no magic. Change is gradual. Right? When you change something in your life, you have to get away with that old self to be able to accept your new self. And in between, it needs patience, determination, lots of work, sacrifices, because you are changing from a new one, from the old to the new. That takes a lot of time, the discipline. So just be patient. For those who want to change their life, just be patient. Work on to your goals, whatever change you want to do it. Just be consistent. That's the important consistency. When I was in the Philippines, actually, uh, I had no plan or dream of going to another country. I did not dream of leaving to another country, but because of my desire to learn something, because of my desire to see the other part of the world, I went out of the country at first to get experience. And then eventually, I like it. So I decided to stay here. But in those years, it took me like how many years before I accept that, oh, I'll stay here in Canada. So you see, you need a lot of time, a lot of uh, sacrifices. So for those who want to change your life, you can't do it overnight. You have to spend lots of time and commitments and sacrifices. So just be consistent and be patient. Over to you. Wow, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> My big, big respect to you. Thank you for sharing. Great. Okay, and what? next question and very important question also. What does IAU membership mean to you and how can you contribute to the growth of IAU members and youth? Well, uh... I'm not a part of uh, organizational structure of IIU. Being a member, of course, the only thing that I can contribute is, of course, participating in this, this job like this. Participate and probably share something about me to be able to connect to other people. Maybe some people will learn from my experience. Hopefully, I'm giving value. Other way of uh, helping the organizations grow is for me to contribute through speaking. So I did speaking many times in the past in IIU. I've been a member of uh, talk. Uh, maybe I was moderator once. So that is, if they ask me to do something, then as a member, that's where I can contribute. Right. Share what you know, share your learning, share your experience, share your stories by speaking, by being a guest to an inspirational talk show like this. So that is how can I contribute for the growth? Wow, thank Over you. To you. <laughs> we really need you. We are really proud of you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> well, welcome. Okay. And next question. What does love and friendship mean to you? These two are the strongest and most important feelings, yes? Without which I think our life has no meaning. Your opinion, please share. Friendship and love uh, are two of the most important in our lives, right? Yes. Because that's where we share our success. Uh, you asked me a question about success a while ago and yes. 
I mentioned different definition of success to each and everyone. Like we have a different definition of success. We have a different mindset, belief about success. Now, what does friendship and love something to do with success? This is where you're going to share your success. If you have friends who are really supporting you, then you will share that success to them. One thing more, friends are the one who will support you to become successful. I always believe that you can't succeed alone. You need help. And friends are there to help us, support us, guide us to become successful, right? And what does love mean? Love, I'm, I'm not speaking only of romantic love, okay? I'm also speaking to love to friends, yes. love to other people. Love mm -hmm. to what you're doing, right? Yes. Love to your job, love to your passion. And I'm speaking about love to inspire, love to mentor, love to share. So love is very important because that is kind of feeling that will uplift you, that will lift you up to do what you want to do in this world. Love is something, a feeling that gives you that strong desire to continue. If you will replace love with hate, do you think you will be successful? Do you think you will be happy? The answer for me is no. So that is the two most important in our life, love and friendship. Without this, we're not complete. So wonderful. Great answer. Thank you so much. You are a right. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Okay. Next question, my dear friend. What do you think the world will be like in the future? Well, that's a tough one. Uh, no one can predict future, actually. We do not know that in 2020, there will be pandemic, right? Mm. Now that we are about to enter this uh, post-pandemic era, I think this will be the new normal. We are transitioning to this one. So what will be the like in the future? Probably there will be no more pandemic for the next 50 to 100 years. That is for me my, my own way of seeing the future. Like we are now moving into this scary part of the history in the world after two years. We are now slowly going back to normal. So that's what I see, the life in the future. And that pandemic will give us learning and experience to be very careful, to value life. Like, uh, I see see some countries is still not recovering from the economic destruction of that pandemic. So economy is not really good. Uh, Canada was affected, of course. Uh, we're experiencing the highest inflation rate. But the future is as a promise for us. Right? Life goes on. That's what I see. For each an individual, we continue on our life, right? Uh, we continue to learn. We continue to connect just like this. This is a connection, right? This show connects us, the two of us too, and the audience. So life continues. Uh, we are here to do what we want to do in our life. If you're a teacher, then continue in your life. So it's very difficult to predict future, but this is, what can I say? To everyone. What you do in the present time will determine your future. So be thankful for what you're doing right now because that will be the manifestation of what you're doing today for the future. So if you do negative things today, certainly your future will be also negative. If you do positive things, right things today, then certainly you have a good future. That is wow. how I see the future. Wow, actually, really, very interesting and very important answer there. 
Thank you. And you know, I have also one question. Uh, why are young people our future and what would you say to them? So very interesting. Yep. What can I tell the young people? Well, to the young people, since you're young, enjoy your youth. Okay. But when I say enjoy, I'm not talking about doing like negative stuff like into drugs, too much drinking, too much party. I'm not talking about that. So just enjoy your life. Do it in moderation. You will be young once. Later on, you will transition to middle age, and then later on, you will be old. So do something in your young years that will give you good memories when you grow old. So take it easy. Of course, uh, learn from the old people. Learn to start developing yourself. Invest on education. If you have time to do master's and doctorate, do it while you're still young. But while doing those things, enjoy yourself. Just enjoy yourself. Uh, have fun. Okay? But I'm not referring to the fun that will destroy your life. Over to you. Wow. <laughs> really proud of you. I am also very happy today. Thank you. Thank you. And now. How do you feel about the show? Well, what I feel about show is uh, I get to share something. This is impromptu, more of a impromptu speaking. So you're not actually 100% prepared for this one, right? But what I feel for the show is it connects me to you. You're my best friend. You're my friend. So it connects me to you. It connects me to the people. Uh, even if there's no hundreds or thousands of audience, that's not important. What is important is you connect to one or few people. And that is important. You share inspiration. You speak. You connect. You inspire. So that's how I feel with this show. Whoever the guest here, that is the most important here, is the connect to people and that is the most important is the human connection over yeah. to you thank you <laughs> thank you so much thank you thank you so very amazing counselor okay can you suddenly tell me what you we are dreaming of right now uh, what i'm What I'm dreaming right now. Well, yeah. uh, you know what? I just want to be happy. That's the dream. I just want to be healthy, live longer. And probably I dream of visiting Georgia and Croatia. I could visit you probably. Never know. I'll be talking to your school or probably I can visit oh, Croatia. Oh, watching you. Okay. I'm... Georgia Kislava and Krisha Diana Dratkovic. <laughs> we are I'm also dreaming of course visiting India one time. India or probably so, other part yeah. of the world. A summer we white yes, you and be kept next. Yeah. <laughs> yes, next project. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, <laughs> finally, finally, I have for you a last question. My dear friend, yeah. what would be your message to the society reaching us now? Because so many people joined us today. Well, I have a simple message. Uh, let's continue to support one another while we are in the process of developing ourselves. When you develop yourself and you connect to other people, that will help you more to improve yourself. Okay. No man is an island. 
Okay, so we need people, we need connections, but we need positive, vibrant connections. We need positive influence from friends. Let go of the hate. Let go of the being a uh, critic. We got lots of critics in the world. So we should be a coach. We should be an inspiring person to other people. Let go of negativity. So always be happy with yourself. Huh? And to be happy is always be grateful and thankful for what you have. Okay, so you will not be happy if you are not be grateful. So just be grateful of what you have. Just enjoy life. That is my message. Just enjoy life. Be happy. Just be yourself while continue on improving yourself. Over to you, my friend. Great, great, great. Also be happy to you. I am happy and excited today. Actually, we hear amazing responses and inspiring answer. I want to congratulate him because he is truly a very important person for the community. He is the diamond of the world. Thank you very much. You are doing a very important job. We are proud of you. God bless you, my dear respected guest, one Eric Tandok from Canada. I wish you a lot of success in your life. Also, a big thank you to everyone who watched our show with interest today. For those who could not watch this amazing show, you can watch the recognition on our YouTube page. Now it is time to say goodbye. I back soon with a new guest. Stay with us and be the next guest and answer my questions. There, tell something. Thank you very much. Ah, uh, so yes, thank you. <laughs> Welcome. We are proud of you. Well done. Great show today. Yeah. That was very nice. Thank you for having me here. <laughs> And thank you for all the audience who participated. And thank you for your time and thank you for everyone's time. I enjoyed my stay here. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you. Thank you so much. Ayayu is a change. Ayayu brings the change. Ayayu is a revolution. Goodbye. Thank you so much. <laughs>